Hello, it is Rebecca Robbins from Mind Shaper SLP here. And I am talking to you today about my favorite tool that I use for behavior management with my students. And stay tuned to the very end because I have a special announcement as to how you can learn how to use this tool at home with your child too. So be sure to stay tuned to the end to get the information on that. But let me just go ahead and uh, spill the beans as to what the my favorite tool is for behavior management, and it is a social story. So if you haven't ever used a social story with your child, there's no better time to start than now. They really do help your, your autistic child really know how to utilize their coping strategies or what to expect in a situation or what are the words they can say in a situation when they when those things might have escaped them otherwise so let me just back it up a minute and let you know what a social story is in case you've never heard of it or you've never used one a social story is basically exactly what it sounds like it is a story but it's written from the perspective of your child and it basically outlines and describes a social or life situation that your child is experiencing. And it gives your child the tools of what to do and say in that situation so that they can be more successful in that situation. And there's lots of different things you can use a social story for. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to use a social story to manage behaviors or to manage a challenging situation that your child is going through that is resulting in a behavioral meltdown or is in resulting in some anxiety or just difficulty coping with the scenario. So first, I want to tell you all the different components that will go into a social story of that nature. So one of the things that I already told you is that the social story is written from the child's perspective. So you wanna use pictures of the child themselves, if at all possible. But if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have pictures of your child or you don't have the ability to print out pictures of your child, then you can always find other pictures that will represent the situation. Um, so if at all possible, you want to use the real pictures of your child and or the environment in which the situation is, is occurring, you want to write it from the child's perspective. So you're going to be using I language. So the idea is that your child will be reading the story and they'll be saying the words as if it's them saying the words to themselves. If your child is not yet a reader, you can still use social stories and you would just I would um, have the child point to the words as you're reading it. And especially if your child is not a reader yet, you definitely want to keep it, the pictures as personalized as possible and definitely use pictures of your child themselves so they can see themselves in the picture and it matches what the words are saying. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just describe the current situation or the current problem that your child is having. So let's say um, that the issue is your child is having a difficult time transitioning away from a preferred activity. So you could start the social story saying something like, um, I like to play on my iPad. I like to play on my iPad. It could just be as simple as that. And I don't like to put my iPad away when it's time to be all done. Um, when mommy tells me I have to put my iPad away, that makes me feel mad. So that brings me to my next point. We want to talk about what the child is actually feeling in the situation right now and validate those feelings. We're not writing these social stories to make our children wrong or bad for how they are currently behaving in the situation we are using it to teach them that this is a situation they're experiencing, their emotions are, are valid, and here is a better way to handle the situation so it goes smoother for everybody is basically the goal. So you're gonna say, so when mommy tells me I have to put my iPad away, that makes me feel mad. 
it's okay that I feel mad, but what's not okay is when I fall on the floor and cry. Or what's not okay is when I, when I stomp my feet or hit mommy or whatever the uh, behavior is that your child is currently demonstrating because they're not, they don't have the skills or the ability to cope with the situation. That's when you, what you would add there. So then you're gonna kind of highlight what the current reactions are from your child with the situation. And then you're going to go into describing what the appropriate replacement behavior is. And you can say, even though I love playing with my iPad and it, I feel mad when I have to put it away, I can, I can say, oh, okay, mom, I'll play again later. Or you can you give some replacement phrase or a replacement strategy um, that your child can use in that moment that they don't want to transition away from the iPad, which is the example we're running with right now. So, so that after they're done reading the story, they can pull that phrase or pull that sentence out of the social story and use it in real life. And this is really where the magic of the social story happens is those, those little phrases that are purposefully placed in the social story that your child is able to pull out and use in the real life setting. That is where the magic happens and where we take the, the social story off the page into real life. So then you would go into describing some appropriate ways for your child to handle whatever the situation is. And then after that, you go into describing how the result of using the replacement behavior will be as opposed to the description of what the situation is currently where he gets in trouble or when I, when I, when I throw my iPad and when mommy tells me it's all done and I throw my iPad, I get in trouble. Um, that would be what's happening currently. But if you say, at the end of the social story, after you've described the strategies or the language that your child can use instead, you can end the social story saying, when I use my words or when I use my calming breath or when I use put strategy in here, then I feel calm and my mom feels happy and I get to play with my iPad again later. So you also want to highlight the benefit for your child in using that replacement behavior. So with this particular example, the benefit is because the child made a better choice and is using a better strategy to cope with the disappointment of having to transition away from the iPad, they have the opportunity to use the iPad again later. And the other benefit is that they feel calmer and happier in their body and their mom feels happy. Kids want their the adults in their lives to feel happy. Uh, I usually add this in most of my social stories when we're talking about behaviors, uh, whether it's like a teacher will feel happy or my friends will feel happy, just to highlight that when we make good choices, it really benefits everybody. Or when we make choices that, um, that are demonstrate a more appropriate coping behavior, then that everyone feels happy. And of course, when you're writing this story, since you're writing it from the child's perspective, you have to use language and words that make sense for your child and that your child can relate to. So you're going to keep it at your child's level. You're going to keep the language as simple as your child needs which might mean that you're using one sentence per picture on the page. Um, or if your child is a little more vocal and has more language, then you can use longer sentences to teach them what to do and say in the situation. So those are the basic components of what you're gonna put in a social story to help manage a behavior. So let me just review them real quick. One, you're gonna use real pictures of your child whenever possible. You're gonna use real pictures of the environment or the other people that are also 
involved in the circumstance as much as possible. You're going to write the story from the child's perspective at the child's language level. You're going to start by describing what the situation is currently and how that situation is currently impacting everybody. You also then want to validate the emotions that your child is feeling. If your child is having a difficulty with this example of transitioning away from the iPad and they are mad, you're going to say, that makes me mad. It's okay when I to feel Feel mad, but when I'm mad, I need to use my words. I can practice my breathing or whatever the strategy is. And then after you validate the emotions and after you describe the current situation, you're, that's when you start talking about the replacement behaviors. And you want to use some little catchphrases or nicknames for the strategies so that those are the things that you pull out of the social story to use in the moment that your child needs it. So if you it, say to your child, okay, it's time to transition away from, or, you're not gonna say that, okay. It's time to put the iPad away. Then, and your child starts going, you see them start winding up and be like, oh, remember, we're gonna use our common breath today. Or, oh, let's remember, use your words. We can ask for an iPad break. Um, or whatever the phrase or the, the term is. And that will be a prompt or and a trigger for your child in their brain that will bring them back to that social story to help them recall the strategies that they learned and talked about. So with this, you have to review your social story with your child many, many times. And what I would highly recommend is if you're having a situation like the transitioning away from the iPad, read it right before you give your child that iPad um, the, the time to play with the iPad. So right before your child goes to play with the iPad, say, okay, let's read our story about how to take a break from the iPad. And you talk about what are the strategies you're going to use. And so when you, um, you give them that heads up going into the activity, it's fresh in their mind and they're already getting set up for success and it helps them remember the strategies and the words to use when you get to the end of that activity. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Those are the components of a social story when you're using it to manage a challenging behavior. And you know, these stories work for all types of kids, not just um, children with autism, it can really, it can work with any type of child. If your child has ADHD or if your child's neurotypical, they really just describe appro appropriate behavior in a challenging situation. And the kids love it because it's about them. It's got pictures of them. It's written in their voice. And so it really is a very effective and fun strategy that I love to use. And I want you all to be able to utilize this strategy in your house. And it's actually much easier than you think it would be. And that is why I will be hosting a live workshop this coming November 6th called Autism Moms Night Out, the Social Story Edition. So this isn't going to be just your run-of-the-mill, same boring learning opportunity. We're going to have... Um, some prizes and games. And you're also going to have a chance to just have a little bit of a support group type of environment where you get to you get to connect with other autism moms who might be going through similar experiences as you are before we actually dive in to the learning of how to use, how to create the social stories. And the details of everything that this event will entail will be released very soon. I will be opening up the, um, the doors very soon so you can reserve your seat very soon. But I just wanted to give you a heads up and a sneak peek and please comment below. Let me know if you use a social story with your child. If so, how'd it go? And um, let me know if you're gonna be joining us on November 6th. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.